my name is Daniel McKinley and today I'm going to show you the 1 to 5 player game Lord of the Rings from Fantasy Flight Games. So to play Lord of the Rings Journeys to Middle Earth you first have to download the companion app. Now the app is required in order to play but it adds a lot of different variability into it and it will change up. So when you first do your your first scenario the app will show you something completely different than what I'm showing you now. So as a general overview I just wanted to show you the basics on how to play and then that way it'll make more sense with the app which I don't have ready with me but that's why I'm showing this directly. To set up first you need to pick a character I picked Aragorn on the front of it, it shows a lot of his stats, but then on the back, it shows you some of his setup. To set up each of the characters, you first want to get the, the five cards with their name on it. So right here, I have the Aragorn cards, one through five. Then you want to get the numbers one through six of the basic cards. You also need to get the roll cards. Now, Aragorn on the back, it says the roll is captain. So for the startup setup, we're going to use the captain cards. Now there are multiple cards, but we're only going to use the first three in this. As you play more, you will advance your character and get more roll cards and better items as well. Then finally, you'll need one more weakness card. That This will be picked at random, and at the beginning of the game, it doesn't have too much to do with it. But this is just so you know, it's effectively a dead card in your deck. You create the deck and shuffle it up, like so, and you place it with your character card. Now it'll also tell you some starting items. Aragorn needs the sword, the banner, and the travel guard at, garb as the armor. You place all of those items with you. Now you can hold up to four items like this, so as you get better items, you might be replacing some of the old ones. And then finally, you're there to set up. Based on what the app tells you, you will take your figure and place it on one of the starting spots. And it will have you place one or more tiles shown here. And they are indicated with the number that's on the tile itself. So this, for example, is 304A. Keep in mind that the B side would be on the back side as well. On your turn, you're going to take a couple actions. The actions that you have to choose from are simply move or interact or attack. We're going to go into each of those and the specifics. Movement, you're going to be moving up to two spaces. A space is indicated by the gray lines on any tiles. As more tiles get introduced, as long as you're moving from one space, going across one of the gray lines, that counts as one of your two movements. The other action you have is interact. Throughout the game, there will be these tokens that come up either interact tokens, search tokens, or threat tokens, depending on what the app tells you. Threat tokens are generally uh, rustling in the bushes or maybe suspecting characters. We're not sure. And the search token is might be items or other points of interest that you might want to search. When you explore a new tile, there will always the app will always tell you to place new tiles according to the configuration. And more often than not, you'll take an exploration tile like this and place it on the new map tile shown. Whenever a character explores a tile and moves into that tile, they will take one of those and they will get one of these bonuses. We'll explain these in a minute. But you'll place it on your map card and on your character card it'll show the limit of how many you can have. Eric Orange's is four. So I'll place it leaf side up on here. Now, as I said, we would continue, if it was a threat token or a search token, I can choose one of my two actions to interact with it. And all that simply means is on the app, you click the appropriate icon in the space that you're in, and it will tell you what's happening next. Sometimes it'll spawn enemies, or sometimes it'll give you items or benefits. And let's say the app tells you to add enemies to the board. Well, when that happens, you can choose to attack them. When you're in their space, or if you have a ranged character, you can attack them from an adjacent space, you may choose to attack them. Again, following the app, you will be doing a test. 
Now let's talk about the tests because there's a lot of situations where you'll need to do the tests. And this would normally be handled by dice in a lot of games. This uses the deck of cards that you made up to actually perform the tests. And the test is very simple. It's going to have you do one of five different tests. Either might, wisdom, agility, spirit, or wit. And it's indicated by the symbol that's shown next to there. Next to each of your stats, for example, Aragorn's might, it has the number three. That's simply how many cards that you reveal to perform that test. In this example, I, I put up three cards. And what you're looking for is this little star pattern. This star symbol right there means that that's one success. These ones have the leaf icons shown from this token earlier. And you can actually use that to create successes. If it shows zero icons, like so, if it shows zero icons, then that simply means that it has no ability to, to be a success. But let's say I drew this. I have one success and I wanted two. I may discard my Inspire token to make one of these a success. Now you can only do one for each symbol and also limited by how many tokens you have. Earlier I had the sword and this shows one success I would do two hits and two successes I would do five hits. So that would be in my best interest to attack him for five times. In the app you simply say that you're hitting him five times and if any of your weapons or any of your armor or items increase that, then you would increase it there as well. Some also have some special ability like piercing, which ignores armor, which we'll talk about a little bit more later in, as far as combat. If the damage received by the monster matches or exceeds their life total, then they are removed from the board because they have been killed. Now there's a lot of scenarios that you're going to need to do, and it's not just attacking and beating things up. The app will tell you in the storyline what you need to do and what you need to accomplish. For example, you might need to find a certain character and bring them to justice. Well, until you explore the region and find out where they are, you're not going to be able to do that. So making sure that you're playing efficiently is important. You're simply not going to have enough time to do everything you want. Now, with that being said, let's talk about other tests. They work the exact same as attacking. You draw the number of cards indicated by how many are shown here on the test you're doing. Every success symbol is one, one of the successes. And if the app asks you how many successes there are, or a certain amount to need, you simply input how many successes you've received, and the app will tell you the rest. This continues. After each player has taken their actions, it becomes the next player's turn. Now there is no set turn order, you can choose which players play before and after, and once all players have taken their action phase, it goes into the shadow phase. The shadow phase will be shown on the app, and it will show you how many monsters move, which attack, and also how much more threat gets added to the level. Once all the threat has been added, you'll notice there's certain time markers where events may occur, normally more bad guys will show up on the board. And then finally, after the shadow phase happens, then it is the rally phase, where you're able to bring back your cards, shuffle them back up, and draw a certain number of cards to be ready, to have ready for you on the next turn, or on top of the deck. The player continues to this until the players either accomplish their mission, or the threat level has gotten all the way to the end, in which case the players have lost. During the game, players might receive damage by being attacked or by events. If it's physical damage, it'll be marked with these little scratch marks. In which case, unless it says otherwise, you'll put a face-up one next to your player board and follow the instructions. Sometimes it'll say, discard one inspiration token, like this one, fever, and then flip this face down. Each of those counts as one of your hit points that you have lost. Each character has a number of damage points that they can receive as their limit, and also a number of fear, which acts effectively the same way, except it'll do slightly different damages to you. If you ever hit your fear limit or your damage limit, then you need to do a last stand, and in which case your character is removed afterwards. But it might be one last chance to try and really gain the upper hand on your opponents. And, in a nutshell, that's how you play Lord of the Rings Journeys of Middle-Earth. 
I hope this has been a good introduction and a good ease of play into how you will normally set up your first game. Again, follow the app and don't be too intimidated by it. It does have a rules reference book in there. I suggest don't worry about this until you have specific questions on how any of the things work. So that should get you started on Lord of the Rings Journeys to Middle Earth. As you can see, this is an incredibly immersive game, and it's actually a lot simpler to get into than you would have first thought. It looks complicated, but it's really one of the best ways to get a Lord of the Rings experience in a box. So, if you want to give it a try, please come down by Zia Comics in Las Cruces, New Mexico, where we'll be happy to show you Lord of the Rings, Journeys of Middle-Earth. Uh -huh.